Hello beekeepers, today's video is going to be quite a bit different than normal. I'm going to have sort of a tribute to the past and the lost art of beekeeping, a bunch of the knowledge that the old beekeepers have that just kind of got swept under the carpet when we started swapping Langstroth boxes. So this is from the British Bee Journal, January 21st, 1915. It's an article called A Cotswold Cottage Bee Mistress. This view of a Cotswold cottage and bee garden is presented to the reader as typical of scenes that are frequently to be met with among the quaint hamlets of the Cotswold Hills. The cottage is the home of a cheerful couple, Mr. and Mrs. Bowles, of Knot Grove Village, and it has been in the family for something like 100 years. Willem, as he is popularly known, was for many years an earth stopper to the Cotswold hunt and he will tell you numerous tales of the night's work in the woods and of the early days when, as a boy, he used to help in the minding of the bees, which his mother kept in the same corner where the hives stand now. The old man was having his midday nap when the camera was ready, or I should have liked to have had him in the picture. However, the ordering of the bee garden is left much in the hands of Mrs. Bowles because, he says, I can't abide them now. They kick I too much when I work in near them in the garden. She feeds the weak casts in the spring, either in the time-honored way of a saucer pushed under the skep, or by means of a scooped-out alder stick, which is filled with syrup and pushed or thrust right inside the narrow entrance. Swarming commences about the latter end of May, if the season is good, and continues in a happy-go-lucky manner until July comes in. It is rare fun having an apiary of skeps, I can assure you. You get the first swarms and cuts, a smart, and a lob, which is as big as a duck's egg. When the bees swarm, they generally lodge on the nut bushes over the hives or on a low plum tree nearby and are easily hived by the bee mistress after the tanging has induced the bees to settle quietly. Beyond putting two sticks inside the skep as supports for the combs, nothing is done to assist, and so they go on unaided and unhindered. The passing of the swarm season brings a pleasant change when the bees settle down once more to the peaceful duties of honey making. Frequently at this period, the hives would number 10 or 14, but towards August, the old man would blow in a puff of smoke from his pipe and heft the hives, marking the heaviest swarms and the lightest cuts as those to be taken and leaving the old lots for swarming another year. But when a hive got too old and shaky, the bee mistress would have it taken and a swarm and a new skep left in its place. In the former years, it was the sulfur rag and pit that did the deadly work at the bottom of the garden, but now the bee mistress prefers the more humane plan of having the bees taken out to save their lives. Taking the time over, there comes the draining of the honey, the brewing of the methaglin, a delicious and wholesome drink, and the rendering of the wax. For days in the cool kitchen would stand the pans into which the honey dripped from cheesecloth bags hung from the rafters, and oh, the wasps, they would come from their holes in hundreds until the bottles of stale beer hung about the door were solid with drowned wasps. But these troubles were soon forgotten when the draining part was over and the honey was safely tied down in a large earthenware jars. The little profit that results from the old-fashioned skep system is much appreciated, while the pleasure derived from tending the bees during the months of sunshine assists greatly in brightening the somewhat uneventful lives of our village folk.